checking out the history of the hospital, Howard looked through the collection of photographs held in the local history library at nearby Kirkintilloch. There are scarcely any pictures of the hospital and its daily life in the collection, probably because taking photographs was regarded as a breach of confidentiality. One exception was the hospital's football team. The one picture uh, we do have in the archives here giving any idea of the, the life of the, the staff and the patients is this one of the, the football team, um, the Lennox Castle 11, who met the Celtic A team in February 1937 to open the football pitch there. Uh, and the, the lighter coloured jerseys, we have the, the Celtic team and the, the darker jerseys, the Lennox Castle team. And we can also see the, the male attendants in their uniform and cap and moustache here. And um, Dr Chislett and his assistant, Dr Curran, and also some of the, the patient supporters in the background. Dr Chislett, for example, he, he was a, a big shot, you know. And he... I, I think he looked in the place as his estate. I mean, it, it was very, very strict and very fair, he thought. But when I think back on it, he heard there was a male nurse started, it was a landscape gardener. So right away, he got him to do his garden. And eight to five, mm. and two patients. I mean, and that was all for free. Mm. And his wife used to get into the wall garden, walk in, with her oval, her oval basket and cut all the flowers and everything else she wanted. Mm. He thought it, was, it belonged to them. Mm. Mm. It was God Almighty. James Lappin still lives at Lennox Castle. He comes from Shettleston in Glasgow. He first became a patient in 1925 at the age of 15, transferring to Lennox Castle in 1938. Can you remember the day that you went into hospital? Aye. What happened then? Well, see, uh, a, lot of, a man came to, to lift me. That my father said that he would take me on the Saturday. I was supposed to go on the Friday to tell her about and then mm -hmm. My father said that he would take me on the Saturday. Right. So did you know beforehand that you were going? No, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought it was a day. <laughs> it, was, it, was a school, it was a school trip day and it, and then father says, you know, you, you're going to a day with me, you know, but I didn't know when I was going. Mm -hmm. So we went in the, in the car, went to Georgia Square, and then we talked to the, the train. Right. And then he, he says, you sit there, and I'm going to get a ticket. I thought, I thought I was going back home again, but it's, I just come up to the, the sitting room and says to me, you James Lampin? I said, yes. Well, I says, Put, she put her hand out and she said, you have to come with me. I found the fire, the fire seen the doctor, mm -hmm. Dr. Clark, then he went away and I had to go to your father. <laughs> so what did your father explain to you? He never told me, he never, never told me. Never told me. Mm. No, not very much? No, because uh, I don't think he was pleased at me when I year, I year at school and learned nothing when my sister bet me, you know? Mm. <laughs> So how, did he, how, he he doing? how did you feel about going into hospital at that time? I don't know. I don't know. I did. I just went with Did Did you feel sort of angry at all at no, your dad? No. For, no. I don't know. How did he want his doing? I'm not feeling much. You know. Yeah. I don't think he was too pleased with me. You know. Me being a year at school before my sister uh -huh. and she beat me. Right. <laughs> Once in the self-contained community, the patients were given jobs in the hospital workshops, making, mending and laundering their clothes, cleaning the wards and generally maintaining the extensive site. What kind of regime was it for them? Was it uh, fairly hard, would you say? They seemed to accept the fact this was their job, you know, mm. what they had to do in the ward, for example. That was their job. Sometimes it, you could say, if you don't do it right, I'll put somebody else on. That was enough, you know, they wanted mm. to keep their job. Mm. Mm. But uh, I never said anything about remuneration, you know. Mm. I thought it was a disgrace. They used to get ten woodbine. Per? 
per person. Per, per week. Per week. week. Uh huh. That was our four pence. Yeah. Mm. Them that worked in the shops get they get double. Mm. What happened if they didn't smoke? I, I never thought that. <laughs> they didn't. There was no alternative. Mm. I think they sold them. Food, stuff, and bread. Howard talked to Margaret Scully, who came to Lennox Castle at 16 in 1968. Though for the last six years she's been living back in Glasgow. She came back to the hospital to talk to Howard about her version of life in Lennox Castle. And what, what did you do after breakfast? We used to go to a job, uh, work. I used to work in the crop mm -hmm. And what did you do there? I used to answer phones and deliver letters to the wards. Right. So that, that, was, that was quite a responsible job. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm I loved that job because I used to work with June Tree and Morris here. What about um, what other kinds of work? Did you ever work anywhere else? I worked in OT. I worked in the gardens. That's about mm -hmm. the three jobs I worked. Mm -hmm. What would your wages be when you first started? After you played your uh, board money, you get 23 in the lumpens. Uh, and then, if you were satisfactory after six months, you went through a medical and became superannuated. Mm. And they took one and tons off you, and you down to 22 names. <laughs> so you got less money after six yeah. months. Mm. You say you had to pay board, how much would you be paying in board? It was equivalent to 26 shillings. Mm. More than half your wages. Mm. Mm. Did you feel that was good value? No, it wasn't good value at all. To me, it was very, very poor. I never showed any imagination about your menu. Uh, I, mean, you, I can remember, and we're talking about 1937, I could tell you the breakfast. He just looked at me, waking up in the morning and said, it's Monday, it's an egg, fried mm -hmm. egg. Mm -hmm. Tuesday it was ham, Wednesday it was a kipper, Thursday it was a sausage, Friday it was an egg. Mm -hmm. Everybody, never a change. So did you never have a chance to choose your own sort of colours? Or? No, they just no. gave it out. Yeah. Did you... Did you feel bad about that at all, or did you wish you could choose some nice clothes? I would like to choose some, I felt bad, I would like to choose some nice clothes. Mm. No wearing the old fashioned stuff. Mm. Was, we, everybody up the road felt rotten about that. Probably mm. had to wear it, everybody else's clothes or the hospital clothes. Mm. So, did you have sort of underwear that was your own or that was a... Uh, no, I used to wear the ones for here. Mm -hmm. Oh, big, the, the big ones, big bloomers and that we yeah. used to wear. Yeah. So, did you, could you go and choose your, your own or whatever or were they given to you? They, they were given to us. Yeah. So, would they be there for you in the morning? They used to uh, go in or the, they used to go in and put the end of the clothes in that in our beds. Mm. And would that just be anybody's at all in the world? Anybody was them. Uh -huh. mm.